Hello, Jinsha. So, Mr. Jibril Aksan, this is U.S. military's largest helicopter, the CS-35 53k king stallion let's all know what you think yes on the know what you think video i like how the theme of his uh, videos are always his name of channel right usually his videos are like you know this is this the case but it's not what you think he always falls up with that right? you know videos like this are just point blank reviews of things i guess but most of his like famous videos are basically like that is this you know this is this but not because of not what you think which is like awesome. How can you like build a channel, make it this big and still keep the theme? That's some distant thinking, I guess. But yeah, is this the replacement to Shinnok or Shinnok is way too old? I don't know. Like, uh, you know, even even after watching all these videos, still, my knowledge is still limited. Shinnok is the big cargo one, right? Uh, you know, <clears throat> Osprey is like supposed to be like, uh, you know, combination, like hybrid type of version. But I'm guessing Shinnok was the like helicopter version of the big cargo one. So this is supposed to replace that because it's the largest one. So I'm guessing it's replacing. It's the one in the background, right? Why is it just have one rotor? And if you can have one rotor, why did Shinnok have two? I'm guessing it's newer technology. You can like put that big of a rotor now. Is is that what it is? Or let's wait one. Remember, if you like more Rickson, don't forget to subscribe. So I know which type of videos react to more. Uh, check out the Rickson. This is the link in the description. I've been watching these military style videos a lot. So if you haven't seen those reaction, definitely check out the link in the decision or in the end of the video end card. The YouTube will basically give you the best for you type of thing. End cards are something like that, right? You always click on like best for viewer. So I guess depending on what you watch and what your algorithm, it will probably, you know, recommend according to that from much. It's, you know, whenever I think about YouTube's algorithm, it's always awesome. Like how, how complex it must be. Over time, it just accumulated and accumulated. Roll this watch it. Covering a typical helicopter to do 360 degree turns while continuing to move straight on its track challenges even the most seasoned pilots. A maneuver like this requires the pilot to simultaneously adjust multiple controls with their hands and feet in order to fine tune the amount and direction of thrust generated by the main and tail rotors. But in this case, the only adjustment the pilot has to do is to step on the yaw control pedal. That's because the U.S. military's largest and you know it's the bu Q and E button. I think in GTA we would just like, do that. <laughs> in GTA, I remember like you know tilting you know airplanes, helicopters, whatever. Then I realized you can lean and turn even better. Apparently, most powerful helicopter, the CH-53K King Stallion, is the first and only heavy lift helicopter that has fly-by-wire controls. More on that later, Ooh, but in addition to this capability, the King Stallion can provide significantly more lift capability compared to its predecessor, the CH-53E Super Stallion. And you gotta see this. During its test phase, the King lifted progressively heavier payloads. Here is a 4,000 pound concrete block being hooked up, which the helicopter could easily pick up. Look at it. Then an like external payload right of just under 12,000 pounds was issues. lifted and after some hovering, was jettisoned. But this next test really showcases the power of the King Stallion. In February of 2018, the CH-53K successfully lifted 35,000 pounds. That's three times what the Super Stallion could lift. Look at that. You can tell it's heavy tons. by comparing the angle of the rotor blades with and without the heavy weight. It's really pulling on the chopper. What is in those things that is 16? Just like its so. predecessor, the King has three engines, but each engine has a whopping 7,500 shaft horsepower, an increase of over 70% compared to the Super Stallion. This allows the King to easily transport a JLTV. So obviously this is not a replacement to Shino because I'm guessing something called Super Stallion was a replacement or maybe even more helicopters in between. I'm guessing Shino was like a 60s, 70s helicopter. And this is the newer one, so many of the videos might have come between it. Or other armored vehicles like the LAV-25, something that would be considered an accomplishment if the Super Stallion did it. In September of 2021, a U.S. Navy MH-60 helicopter crashed near Bishop, California. The downed helicopter weighed 12,200 pounds, but having crashed at an altitude of approximately 12,000 feet above sea level, made the recovery operation challenging. But not challenging enough for the King Stallion, which was only two months into its initial operational testing at VMX-1, 
and had no issues lifting and delivering the damaged MH-60 safely. The King Stallion has the largest and most advanced rotor blades that its manufacturer Sikorsky has ever produced. Of course, these next-generation composite main rotor blades oh, can fold that. and unfold automatically so that the CH-53K can fit okay. inside the hangar of amphibious assault ships. I don't know, man. Obviously, like, it would never have an issue, but I don't... When I see foldable, uh, you know, rotors like that, why can't, be, why can't they be fixed? But then again, even if, like, rotors shut off, like, you're fucked anyway, so why does it matter? My fear is would be like, like, what if it malfunctions as if it start to fold in midair? But if, even if it stops, you're screwed anyway. It's not like, you know, the helicopter's wings, they can glide down. Most airplanes can glide down because basically airplanes are gliders. Helicopters are not that. It would just basically pummel down. Right, that's the problem with like, uh, you know, uh, whenever people bitch about like, why, why are there no flying cars? And I'm guess like there are one or two things, uh, I'm pretty sure very recently come across which is like works as a flying car and it just works, right? I don't think I, I don't know if they if they think of putting production or what or like specialized thing like limited is on Ferrari type of way like they won't sell it, but it works. But then again, there's many asterisks there, and I don't know if like any government will love it. Basically, same thing. We'll just plumb it down. It wouldn't, it wouldn't have a glider type of wings or anything. After all, the King Stallion is here to replace the Super Stallion. But the King Stallion can be transported anywhere in the world since it's strategic lift certified for the C-17 Globemaster and the C-5 Galaxy. That said, the King Stallion doesn't fit inside the C-17 Globemaster cargo aircraft. At least not in one piece. The helicopter needs to be partially disassembled, where the main rotor components are loaded separately from the rest of the King Stallion. This particular C-17 transported the CH-53K to Berlin Airshow in June of 2022, where the helicopter performed the maneuver that we saw at the beginning, called the pirouette. Yeah, I was just thinking, like, mm, if you have to separate engines like that, is that really ease of access? And then, like, wait a minute, this is not consumer, this is military. It doesn't have to be ease of access, right? I thought of that, you know, designation of like how people told me that they reset it after a certain time. So, and then somebody said B-21 implies 21st century. So isn't that confusing next time? But then again, who cares if it's confusing if military knows what the fuck they're doing? It's good if it's, you know, confusing. Most people will like scratch their head. That's what they want, right? Military is not supposed to be like consumer things. It's supposed to be opposite of that. If they know what they're doing, like doesn't matter, everybody gets, gets confused. Pirouette is actually the name of this simple turn in ballet and also in figure skating. The King Stallion can do the pirouettes with ease, thanks to Fly by Wire, the sponsor of I'm kidding. There is no sponsor, just checking your reflexes and they look good. Fly by Wire has been used in fixed wing aircraft for quite some time, but they are not yet common in helicopters. So yeah. what is this fly-by-wire exactly? Yeah, doing all that. In traditional airplanes, the pilot moves mechanical levers to operate a hydraulic control system, which is made up of many parts wire. located across the aircraft. But a fly-by-wire system gets rid of all those mechanical components. Instead, the pilot's control inputs are interpreted by the flight computer, which calculates the control surface positions yeah, anybody who likes cars already know this, right? Fly-by-wire clutches and things that are really like high. Yeah, uh, uh, 10 years ago, I had a sedan. It was called Optra Magnum, but I think in America it was called Lassetti, Chevrolet Lassetti or something. But this was like a bit different version. It had like two liter turbo diesel engine and all that. Uh, you know, it was like, you know, sold as very premium. Chevrolet basically, uh, you know, shut down because of this. Uh, they went really premium where Indian market was like, not that. So whenever Chevrolet cars was get, getting sold in India, right, the premiumness at the time was better than anything. So I still remember that car, fly by wire clutches. Where I was like, what the fuck is that? Most people didn't even know what the fuck that was. But yeah, it basically, uh, you know, electronics. That's what it is. It's like you give your suggestion to computer and computer interprets it. That's it. No more hydraulics. Which I, in cars, I don't, I'm, I don't know, man. I like hydraulics because I like to control things myself. But yeah, it's it works. It's better required to achieve that outcome. This results in various combinations of rudder, elevator, aileron, and engine controls in different situations using a closed feedback loop. 
It's a bit like comparing a gramophone, which picks up and amplifies the sound fully mechanically, to a record player, which has replaced most of the in-between mechanics with electronics. Fly-by-wire has many advantages. It benefits engineers since they can take over 400 pounds of mechanical systems out of the helicopter. Remember, the only thing guaranteed about a mechanical system is that it will wear out. Fly-by-wire results in eliminating approximately 370 mechanical parts that no longer require repair or replacement. But its biggest... Ad I mean, look, it depends on the system and how you make it. Uh, it depends on which thing you're talking about. Basically, in here, like pilots, jets, and helicopter. A situation like that is so complicated. Pilots and basically they would need more mechanical uh, moving parts compared to the electronics. So yeah, a lot of parts are removed. But that's not the case every time where there's computer involved, right? Mechanical parts still gonna be there depending on the situation, somewhat less. But it's computers that are doing the work. So yeah, I, I think the m m most part is like you don't control things directly. Computer do does it. And computer thinks much faster than you and does not make error because computer doesn't have error. Computer didn't fight with, you know, his wife and basically is in bad mood. So, yeah. Advantage is the reduction of workload from the pilots. Maneuvering a helicopter on its own is a challenging task. But when helicopter pilots are coming into a landing zone, they become occupied with numerous tasks during their final descent. Landing can be particularly tricky when there is reduced visibility due to sand or dust blowing. According to the pilots who have flown the King Stallion, doing external cargo lifts is much easier when compared to the Super Stallion. Fly-by-wire controls simplify the process by allowing pilots to easily hover in the same spot while the payload is being hooked in. This process typically I guess the difference would be between F-16 and F-22, right? F-16, people like, you know, I've seen videos, people talk about like, you know, like there is a certain, you know, you need to think about this, you need to think about that, and like certain vibration and things. Why F-22 is just like smooth. It's just like, it gives you just some big, because of technology like this. It requires a lot of communication with the team on the ground, since the pilot cannot see what's underneath the helicopter and has to stay still. On top of that, fly-by-wire systems can be designed to protect aircraft in the event of incorrect or inadvertent control inputs from the pilot, which could prevent accidents. Long story short, the fly-by-wire system on the King Stallion allows pilots to focus more on their mission by reducing the mental and physical workload that's usually required to maneuver a helicopter, especially when they need to watch out for enemy threats. The King Stallion has a maximum speed of 200. <laughs> that shit is gangster. <laughs> I'm gonna use my, my mounted machine gun. I'm gonna say the side of it like that. I don't need to aim it. I just did a suggestion there. Miles per hour and a range of 530 miles. For extended operation, it can be refueled in flight from a KC-130. It can also refuel from a surface ship yeah. while in hover mode, and of course, when on, on the ground. The would take, right? The CH-53K can also operate at higher altitudes and hotter climates. But for the Marine Corps, transitioning to this $124 million flying machine is not without its challenges. Probably the biggest learning curve will be with maintenance. The King Stallion is a lot more system intensive compared to its predecessor. Anytime a new technology is introduced, there are always unexpected issues. For example, the King Stallion had gas exhaust reingestion problems, which degraded the helicopter's power significantly. And there have been and there will be more issues that will surface and get resolved. This is why, even though the King Stallion reached initial operational capabilities in 2019, it would only reach full operational capability in 2029. In the meantime, Super Stallion pilots would need to be trained in order to transition to flying the King Stallion which is going to continue the legacy of heavy lift helicopters that the U.S. Marine Corps has been flying for decades. So next time you hear a U.S. Marine yell, 53 kilo, be aware, they are not walking away from the Imperial system and embracing metric. They are just calling their bird. Ah, fat Christian, now not what you think, dunking on metric system all the time. Yeah, 
53k i have to remember that one now king stallion why go from super to king super stallion ultra stallion i don't know the ultra feels like too much video gaming like what the fuck i don't know super to king yeah sure why not makes sense <laughs> i don't know you could have changed the name of stallion what what better name you can like transition for stallion to i don't know tiger cheetah i don't know what a, yeah it's it's in, isn't it supposed to be like load bearer thing stallion is supposed to be something that fast you could have used some name that like has a heavy load or something i don't know i'm thinking too much yeah so us mid is larger so yeah this is insane man single rotor no need for you know you know type of two rotor things which obviously is own issues and limitation yeah this is insane look at the size of it and everything all right well that was uh you know by the channel now what you think if you like my reaction don't forget to subscribe and i'll see you next time